I'm really excited about the line that we have here tonight. Uh, we've got some of the best speakers here tonight. We got some great speakers tomorrow, so please encourage your friends, family, other like-minded people to be here to join us tomorrow. We're gonna have a ton of food uh, tomorrow. We got Jaduces, we got Sigdet Landing. We got a lot of food tomorrow. So uh, come over here, enjoy, kind of eat, hang out on a Sunday afternoon by the wood. And then please visit my site, like I said, WilliamWallace.net, and check out some of the things I have there. This is some of the sponsors of our show. My next guest, or MAGA Fest, is probably one of the best dressed gentlemen that we have not only involved in politics, but I would say in Louisiana. He's always not only dressed sharply, but he comes with sharp information. He comes properly armed with not only the right information, not only correct information, but with the right ideologies, the right beliefs, and I'll tell you, all of the right bona fides to make a great congressman. After this event tonight, we're going to have a fundraiser for him in the room in Clay Cangelosi's room. You can get that room there, of course, but please join us tonight in a fundraiser for him. Any amount will do, and if anything else, just offer him your support. But please offer him your support right now with a round of applause for Albert Gilbert. The room is 2040, everybody. Right now? No, no. <laughs> After his speech. <laughs> You're probably wondering how it is that I get to follow such speakers as Eric Sinetta, Claston Bernard, Isaac Hayes. Well, let me tell you how. We all drew straws, and I lost every time. <laughs> What a grand event, a gathering of true patriots, and that is rare in this country. I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm honored to be a witness and certainly honored to be a participant in this great event. I've been given an extraordinary blessing. I've been able to travel all around the world, many, many countries. Brazil and Argentina, Paris and Rome, Russia and Ukraine. And in all of my travels, there's one common denominator. That one common denominator that I found in traveling the world is that America is the greatest nation on earth. America has the greatest freedoms. America has the greatest opportunities. In this country, you can be anything that you want. If you envision yourself, envision yourself in a bottle of milk, you could choose to be at the bottom with skim milk. You could choose to be in the milk, in the milk. Or you could choose to fight and scuffle and struggle your way all the way up to the cream. Where the cream is. Yes. My, my, my. my sister <laughs> is a good example of struggling up to be cream. Her grandfather was born a slave. Today, she is a medical doctor. She teaches at Bales Medical School. She has a brother who's a, a former state senator and a former uh, law school teacher professor at Rutgers. In two generations in America, this can be accomplished. This has been accomplished. Because because we are the land of opportunity. Sadly, we can lose all of that. Right now, we're in danger of losing our freedoms and our opportunities. We are at, like,
like right here, a cliff. We are on a cliff overlooking the abyss. And we're in danger of being pushed over that cliff. That's where we are today. As we teeter on this precarious situation, everything, everything is up for grabs. Everything is on the table. All of our, our economy is at risk. Our very nationhood is at risk. Of course, all of our opportunities and freedoms are certainly at risk. There are some things that we don't talk about a lot because we are genteel people, being Republicans. Some things that, that we need to, I, I, I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking about some of those things that are too often kind of overlooked and set aside. Like God. Huh, that's a good stuff. <laughs> God is one of the factors that has made and kept America great. Our Judeo-Christian faith. Yes. But today, Christianity is under the gun. Christianity is considered toxic. Yes. It's considered discriminatory by the Democrat Party, the loony left. political left. Yes. First, they went after prayers in school. They snatched the very prayers right out of our children's mouths. And we stood by and watched. Then they evicted baby Jesus from the nativity scenes in our cities at Christmas time. And once again, we stood by and watched. Today, the Lunar left wants to make sure that no federal funds of any kind go to any non-public school. And they want to make sure that the LGBTQ agenda is implanted in every public school in America. And they want to make sure that boys are in girls' bathrooms and boys' dressing rooms. So, Americans, once again, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to once again sit back and watch? Today, America is bilingual. English has been one of the glues holding together this country. Our common language has been very important through all the generations here. But today, if you get someone on a recording line, they don't, they don't get a person. The recording will say, press one for Spanish, press two for English. Today, if you go into a service station restroom and the floor is wet, there'll be a yellow cone that says, wet floor in Spanish. <laughs> Today, there are almost as many Spanish-speaking radio stations as there are English stations, and that's coming increasingly on television stations also. Now, when my French-speaking dad went to school, they went his little butt for speaking his native language in school. But today, that was then. Today, we are spending millions of dollars to teach children in other languages in our schools. Millions. It's costing our already underfunded public school system. The destruction of our common language pushes us ever 
closer to that edge. And as we teeter on the edge, one of our greatest freedoms is under attack. And that is our Second Amendment. The lunatic left has a list of proposals. They want to make us all register all of our guns so that they will know where each gun is. They want to ban certain weapons and certain bullet systems. They want forced, you know, how does she say it, uh, Miss uh, uh, Calamity, uh, <laughs> she says mandatory, she wants mandatory buyback, which means you have to sell your already registered gun, because they know that you have it, because you registered it. You have to sell it to the government, they give you a few nickels, and only the government and violent criminal thugs will have guns. We will not be able to protect our families from the violent criminal thugs nor from the tyrannical government. I'm going to, something terrible happened to a good friend of mine. His name is Papa Faulkner. I'm going to explain it exactly the way he would explain it to you. Michelle, let me tell you, it's a terrible thing happened to me and all my gun. I was going to take all my gun out to the wood and I was going to shoot them, you know, to make sure every gun could still work right. Maybe some need a little oil or cleaning or something. So I put all my gun in a bag, in a big sack. I put that sack over my shoulder and I went out to the wood and I sat up against a, a big tree. I sat down there. I was going to take, drink me a cold beer first, you know, before I go shoot. I start drinking that beer and all of a sudden, right out of the wood, come a big brown wolf. The wolf run over here and snatch up that bag, put all my gun in it, and run back in the wood. But he kept going. So all my gun is gone now. I don't know what to do. It's a terrible thing. That's what Papa Fortno says. <clears throat> so when they come asking for registration of guns, they will have to go and look into the woods and see if they can find that sack <laughs> that the wolf took. God, guns, common language that are too rarely mentioned, too rarely discussed, too rarely thought about. When we add to those the things that we normally talk about, Americans, we are in one heck of a mess. Yeah. Now you know I'm a native veteran. And I can cuss like a sailor. And, and so there's some other kinds of words that I would probably use. But I'm a Baptist preacher. Woo! So I can't use those words anymore. <laughs> so as I was saying, we are in one heck of a mess. Is in the Bible? <laughs> I sincerely believe that like at no point since the Civil War, have we been this terrible a situation? We've, we've been really in danger of losing America. If just, just think about it, that war and all of its divisions and costs. And we are teetering on the brink right now. Today, unbridled federal spending is one of the greatest threats to America. It has our economy on the ropes. Cost of food, gasoline, uh, electricity, housing are making 
life very difficult for Americans, for working Americans, for families, for the elderly. <coughs> yes, we are. For the poor. That federal spending has driven up costs to the point where we have people scrambling and scraping for dollars and finding it very difficult to live in America. We spend in billions and billions of dollars all over the world. Everywhere else. While America's roads and bridges crumble. We are paying foreign soldiers to fight their wars while our veterans who have fought our wars are sleeping under bridges. The $35 trillion national debt. We are on the verge of a, of a, of a bankruptcy disaster that is equal to the great disaster of the 1930s. I don't understand how thinking people could let this country get into that situation. Explain it to me, because I'm a country boy, I don't understand. How is it that we let ourselves get into this? We must adopt a more common sense America first approach to federal spending. We, we just have to protect our people. And speaking of protecting our people, <clears throat> we have let our once safe and secure communities and streets be run by drugs and thugs, overrun with violent repeat offenders. Woke liberal DAs, judges, and politicians have removed or reduced penalties to the point where there are almost no consequences for bad behavior in America. Now I told you I was a country boy. One of the things I learned being a country boy a long time ago, and my mama taught me this, between a zero and five, if you impose consequences on bad behavior, the bad behavior will stop. Now, My mama, you know, this, I was a kid before they had all these alphabets, you know, like ADD and ADHD and you know, all that. Well, my mother was a long time school teacher, school principal, and she used to put her arm around her son and say, now this is my ADHD child, but I whipped it out of him by the time he was five. <laughs> And truly, by the time I was five, I had so many stripes on my back, I thought I was a zebra. <laughs> they even stopped employing the death penalty. Without the death penalty for heinous crimes, two things happen. First, taxpayers are burdened, paying food, lodging, clothing, air conditioning, heating, for decades, for all of these people who are truly heinous criminals. The second thing that happens is that justice is denied to victims and their families. Justice is denied when the perpetrator continues to live and the victim yes. continues to be dead. Yes. That is a denial of justice. And it's something that we need to seriously consider. And I truly believe in forgiveness, and I believe in uh, second chances and all those kinds of things. But if you are young enough and smart enough, if you are old enough and smart enough to kill somebody today, 
you should pay the penalties today. And if my mother was in charge, I can promise you that justice would be swift and immediate and just. <laughs> we must reverse those liberal policies. We have to impose fair and serious punishments and let the police do their jobs. They are the first line of protection. And we cannot continue harassing them, dragging them into court every time they pull some thug out of a car. Just a few days, there was a situation in uh, Miami. And there's this thug driving a car, speeding. And uh, number one, he was speeding. Number two, he had illegally dark tinted windows. Both of those were crimes. So they pulled him over for the speeding and he had him put the window down and give him that, his driver's license. Then he started to put the window back up. And the officer said, wait, wait, don't put the window up. He continued to put the window up. Now, I'm a cop. Let me explain to you two things. What went through the cop's mind? Number one, this guy's about to shift gears and drive off. He's going to drive over my foot, knock me down, and drive away. Or, number two, he is reaching for his gun. Now, I told you, I'm 27 years behind the badge. I'm still the diver for the Oppos Police Department. I'm a lieutenant. Now, there was a day a long time ago when I was putting all my gear and my little girl I said, Daddy, where are you going? And I still tear up a little bit when I think about that day. I explained to her what a policeman is and what a policeman does and what I was about to go and do. And she said, hurry back then. I promised her, and I promised my God that I would do everything within my power to keep my word to that little girl. Now, this officer in Miami very probably told the same thing to his little girl with the same level of passion and commitment. And so I understand what was going on in that officer's mind when he said, no, stop, stop. Get out of the car. The guy continued to put his window up. Police officer said, get out of the car. Get out, get out of the car. The guy didn't get out of the car. So immediately, he opened the door and removed the fellow from the car. He pulled him out. The guy resisted. He took him down. He and another officer took him down. Now, they want those officers' hides. Justice for Pookie, we hear the resounding cry. This fellow Speeding, unlawful tent, refused to, to obey a, a lawful order. He got exactly what he was supposed to get. If I had been the officer, I would have done the exact same thing. Because I have a commitment to go back home. We have to stop doing that to officers. And while we're talking about protecting our people of invasion of 10 to 15 million illegal aliens is simply beyond rational Treason. comprehension. Treason. They bring crime, diseases, drugs, illegal guns, human trafficking. They get free food, free lodging, free transportation, free money, free education, free health care. They get to stay in luxury hotels while many of my federal, my fellow 
Navy, Army, Marine Corps, Air Force veterans sleep on the bridges. Did I mention that before? I probably did. And I'm telling you, I'm going to keep mentioning it every chance I get until this nation does what it's supposed to do. Too often we crawl back into our little comfortable cubby holes. Red or blue, white or black, these are ours, and we forget sometimes that we are all in this mess together. We should be united. Unfortunately, we are not. Federal spending threatens every family. Rampant crime threatens every single American. The illegal immigrant invasion affects all of us. Places like New York and Chicago thought that they were free. Well, if you just ask them today, they'll tell you a very different story. Those uh, cities that opened their doors before have shut those doors and they're trying to find some way to handle it and to pay for this wave of immigrants. Now look, one of the things that I learned from mom was that we, we are loving people, we're giving people. And we want to give and to help as much as we can. But she also taught me that charity begins at home. And that's not what we are doing today. Today we're having big problems in North Carolina. But there's not enough FEMA money for the victims, the working families of America, because that money has already been given to house and to feed and to clothe illegal immigrants. That is Incredible stupidity. It is illegality at its work. It's treasonous. Yes, yes. The people who are doing it, and, and that's part of this, the DEI uh, administration. A man heading the transportation department who knows his only experience with transportation is that he had a bicycle when he was 10 years old. Boogie And we had a lady who was responsible for the secret service. And her only goal and, and, and desire was to have more women in the force. Not to have a quality force. And under her watch, we had one, uh, and under, if you, under her administration, she's retired after the first one, two attempts on the former president's life. Now, one of my <clears throat> abilities is that of a sniper. When you will let a sniper get to be 130 yards away from his target, that is criminal. We normally shoot 750 yards away. 130, that's so close. And to let a sniper come within that distance of the former president, it's absolutely treasonous and criminal. And all those DEI people who are hired to run America need to be brought to justice. And the dummy who hired them needs to be brought to justice too. Government's job is to protect every single American from these forces that threaten us. Today, you learn where I stand on many of these issues. 
Those are the issues which have to be debated and voted on in Washington by our chosen representatives. So we must ensure that we choose experienced, seasoned, rock solid voices to protect your children and grandchildren, my children and grandchildren. Strong voices that will continue to stand up for God, to stand up for America, and to stand up for just plain common sense. God bless you and thank you. Absolutely amazing, Al Rayo. Thank you so much. We need you in D.C. fighting for the people of not only Louisiana but our country. With that, how ready? I know you are, and all these people in the room are behind you. Thank you so much. Okay. Speaking of, I know those boots. 